Hello from Little Green in the Coast, Maine. It's okay. <laughs> been a long time since I've done any kind of um, filming or podcasting, but this is a special event that I wanted to share about because I'm here with my dear friend Barb, <laughs> who's my partner in crime and travel buddy to all over the world from Shetland to Maine to Western New York State. <laughs> to all kinds of woolly adventures, and we're here finally. We went today to the Fiber Frolic in Windsor, Maine, mm -hmm. and it's the first time we've been to that, and we have some goodies to share. So this is where we are, and we've spent the long weekend having a holiday, doing our things, knitting and spinning and reading and going to the beach and just plain old chilling, which is what we like to do a lot of. So, so here we are sharing some of our... Um, acquisitions. So the the Windsor Fairgrounds is adorable and smallish and very nice. And the Fiber Frolic has lots of vendors, demonstrators. We saw some people spinning on various kinds of wheels and flax preparation, which was fascinating. And what else did we see? Oh, um, Lots of farm yarns. Oh yeah, that farm that yarns. was something that's really great. All these natural, woolly, wonderful, squishy yarn. And yeah, they had a fantastic used fiber equipment. Oh my thing. gosh, you're right. It was the largest fiber equipment show. It was the showing of inventory I think I've ever seen. I was, agree. And still, it's tomorrow, and there's still like tons of fabulous yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I managed to leave great. without a loom, without buying a wheel. We managed to help sell a few things to some new spinners, <laughs> which was helpful. A young girl was looking at combs, and they were combs for a great deal. Great. Yeah. And she was always saying she'd been wondering about it for a long time, and we were just like, go, buy them. Buy them now, because you'll never see them. This is a great deal. Yeah, there was a, a little Purrington floor loom, which was, was old, but still working, and I know that those are a great thing, and it was gone by the end of today. And there was a great story with, well, this wasn't for sale, but in the demonstrators, there was a Canadian production wheel that the lady was spinning on. And she shared the whole story of how she acquired it going way back to generations before at the border of Maine and Canada. And it was quite interesting. And it was a double treadle and she was so relaxed, long drawing across her lap in front of her. And it was really fascinating and beautiful. And they just want to just come home and spin, right, Barb? Which we are going to do. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we get done making our little reports, we have to send it to my daughter because she couldn't come with us this time. So, you want to start? Yes, well, Before it gets dark. <coughs> speaking of spinning, so the first thing that, and you'll share yeah, your first Well, first thing, first thing we, we did. did was fleece barn, so you're on first. Oh, we'll fleece go, barn, yeah. We'll go and as yeah, we came and in. I was never going to come home with the fleece, of course. That's always what I say, but <laughs> it's the first thing we do. So this is a, um, I think it's a Romney, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. I think it's a Romney. So I don't think it's a cross. It's a Romney. Yeah, it's a Romney. South Main Street Romneys. And Wishart is the shepherd. Yeah, it's a Romney. Natural color. And this is beautiful silvery gray, which I really out. love. It's pristine, clean, and yeah. beautifully skirted, and I can just go right home and wash it and spin with it. You can pull out a lock and show them. It, it's just yeah. kind of like butter. It's gorgeous. Oops. A lot of them were short-ish, so this is on the shorter end of what I usually work with, but I didn't mind. I think, oh gosh, this part's looking shorter than the part I saw when I bought it. <laughs> Oops. Doesn't matter. Got a beautiful crimp, beautiful luster. So I'm gonna look forward to carding that. Look homey it maybe. So we got past the fleece barn with just one fleece. <laughs> okay, and then we headed towards the I, the uh, first uh, vendors, and um, I found this absolutely okay. This is Lester Longwell wool, long wool, from Farmhouse, it's Mrs. Hartman's Farmhouse Market. Emily Hartman is the proprietor and she does everything with to, to prepare this stuff and it's really, really beautiful, beautiful fleece. 
And this is what drew me to it. I'm kind of interested in marled stuff now, and I've been. And I will just give you a little fluffy, gorgeous, gorgeousness to spin. And it's just mm. like air. I mean, it's just go so. Yeah, got that, and I'm very happy about that. That's my, that's my fleece thing. Okay, so that was fun. That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Mm. And there, what was the next thing that kind of we went uh, through? That well, we, we went through the vendors. And we, there were so many different farm farms represented, a uh, few different breeds, and we got kind of stuck on the fin booth. There you go. Oh, that follows that. Yeah, the yeah. fin was like amazing. So this mm -hmm. is a farm in Maine, and do I have a card in here? Yeah, maybe. Heron Crossing Farm. There in Whitefield, Maine. I think I've been through Whitefield. I think it's up toward Acadia. Um, okay. You know, or past mm -hmm. up in that area. These are Finn sheep, Finnish landrace sheep, and she had yarn and roving. And I wanted some of the yarn to do a mitten with, like a, a, a selbu mitten, black and white. But she didn't have enough of the sport weight in both colors. And then I was going to do, maybe I'll do a heavier weight, but I really wanted it to be a finer yarn. And so I thought, well, I'll just spin it finer. So I got some white and some, the darkest brown that they have in, uh, so I'll spin up a sport or a, you know, a light sport and do a selbu, Norwegian selbu mitten with the two colors. And the fin was so soft and lustrous. You know, it's not like a really woolly wool. It's so soft, but but she had some knitted things there on display, That's and they, they, I pulled a mitten out of somebody's work basket. <laughs> I thought it was a display item, and it was still on the needles, and I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. I want one. So, and we ended up meeting someone there who I knew from years ago up at uh, the spa events up in Freeport, which was really fun to reconnect. And uh, then Barb got some yarn there. So Hello. they also, um, they also, Heron Crossings also sell, they sell own yarn out of their fin. And um, they ha have lots of beautifully, they dye their own stuff. And I don't know how well this will translate because the, the mm -hmm. light and stare. But I decided to get uh, just a wool, the fin. I'm going to make socks, understanding there's no nylon in it, but I make a lot of socks mm -hmm. about nylon because I like woolly socks. And this is a, uh, actually, this is a, uh, a, a dark, kind of a dark navy, not super black dark, but a dark navy. And it actually has um, some tan gray going through it. Mm -hmm. Kind of tweedy. It's kind of a tweedy, uh, oh, you yeah. can see. Yeah. And um, so I'm going to make a nice pair of woolly kind of tweedy things. Garlic. <laughs> Sorry, and it's very Sorry. very new. I know it's you know what happens. Who watches this now? But it's <laughs> that they had some. It was just it's some very pretty colors. Yeah. And they had a knitted sock or something that was knitted up that you could see what it was like. Yeah, and the yeah. thing that was really pleasing to me. Uh, this is the first time, of course, we said we've, we've been to this festival. Um, Maine was just so much of Maine's product. Mm -hmm was represented there and it's just absolutely beautiful natural wools mm -hmm. and that that really the farm wools I mean I'm not taking away from anything else but it was quite a treat yeah a lot of a lot of people I had not met before so that was great that was that was fun and everything was accessible people it wasn't mm -hmm. a mob scene and and yet there were plenty of people there and vendors nice. and demonstrators alike were generous with their time and exploring and oh Speaking of the demonstrators, Glass is over there. Well, well that was we'll get to that another time. Yeah. So then, what do we do next? These guys, oh, right? I wanted to buy uh, now. This excuse me, I got to reach <laughs> over here. Um, I have you. I purchased this is a weaver, um, Lee Greenwald from is it Sky Farm? Big Sky Farm. Big Sky yeah. Farm. In Vermont. And Vermont, and and she is. I've been buying her towels for years. I mean, like years, and they last for years. And they're the best. I just, they're very absorbent and beautiful. And I was so delighted to hear she was going to be here. And so these are, I, I really, 
Um, I'll just touch that and come back. This is, uh, it's very Gorgeous. squishy, very absorbent. I don't have it open all the way. They're just mm. gorgeous dish towels, and they last forever. She has wonderful colors, and um, yes. so that was fun. I got a couple of those. Yep, and I got one too. Yes. I couldn't resist. Yeah. I've been admiring one of Barb's for years. Yeah, and uh, I couldn't resist. Yeah, Isn't yeah, her lovely? towels are just fabulous. Love them. And she also does rugs and rugs and throw blankets. blankets and yeah, it's yeah. So she'll be at a few other shows this year. I forgot which ones, but oh, it's probably right. Maybe Rhinebeck. I don't know. I don't know because I, I don't know too much about whether she's yeah. at Rhinebeck or not. But I know that she was at Southern yeah. Adirondack, and I oh. think she was. Was she at Town, New Hampshire? I think she, she was. was. Yeah, she was she'd at probably be New Southern Hampshire too. So because it's closer to home. But she'd been to Southern Adirondack in the mm -hmm. past. So yeah, so that was a good treat. That's oh, a treasure. That was a treasure. treasure. And what else? What else? Um, I just yes. got one bump of oh. yarn, <laughs> and it's it's a sock yarn. It's a beautiful merino nylon. It's a, a beautiful color, and the colorway is called Lillian Sour Pickles. <laughs> and the dyer chatted with us. She's homespun girls yarns and hand dyed on the coast of Maine. They're up in Machias, and um, okay. she said she had a line of pickle a, a line of <laughs> uh, colorways about people in the town she grew up in and and that she told me a couple stories about different ones but I'm just a sucker for these colors that's just my jam and um, I will love some socks made out of this or maybe you know an accessory yeah that's really, uh, really, really nice yeah, she has some beautiful stuff yeah and her daughter oh, yeah also so she had her own dying representative and she's a shepherd with her own flock mm -hmm. and um they have a big lots lots of sheep and her daughter was there and her daughter has just become the representative for um Briggs Briggs and, and little um uh, in the united Brunswick. states and so this is really great and she had Briggs and little yarn there and so i um i picked up some of that some marling for um, you know, a gray and white marl, um, five to the inch, hundred percent wool. You know, it's it's really great stuff, and I probably will make a hat and some and some of that for somebody. And then, um, yeah, and I got this. I know I have an idea of what I mean. I got a bunch of these to make a um, a pullover with, and I, there's a pattern that I want to use. I, uh, Hopefully it should work out. It's going to be it's the Ingrid sweater by the Petite Knitter, and it's kind of it's kind of an all textured thing. The latest, you know, bands of textures of different. So that was my uh, stash. We had yeah. fun. We did it. The only other bit I have a little sample of uh, flax that is ready to be processed, and the flax people showed us the breaking mm -hmm. and oh. the cleaning off the outer thing and then throwing through the hackles and then they had a little antique flax, flax wheel and she was demoing spinning flax so she let us have a try spinning with a really cool distaff that wasn't attached to the wheel it was like a broomstick with a thing on top <laughs> and it just leaned against your shoulder as you spun out from it toward the wheel and so that was very fascinating it was just so nice to see a real live example of well-aged flax because I grew some last year and I bred it in the dew but I'm not sure I did that long enough and so now I know what what a real properly aged bit of flax looks like and I can compare that and uh, give it a try. So then we could not leave without having some ice cream from Fox Farm. Fox something farm. Fox Hill or Fox Hill Farm Ice cr Creamery. Fox Farm Creamery or Fox Hill Creamery. They are located in Searsport, Maine and they came over for the fair and that was good. And then we bought some baked things from a sourdough baker and that was also good. And what else did we eat? We just, that was it. We just we walked just around, enjoyed, bumped into around. people and acquaintances and uh, looked in just about every bag of time. fleece because yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Almost bought a great big giant beautiful mm -hmm. fleece 
but and split it. But even at that, it was over our budget. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. It was so gorgeous. good time was had by all, and now we're gonna just relax and spend some time at the beach tomorrow, and then head home and start making new plans. So thank you, Barb. Thank just you, for yucks. Can you tell us how you got into spinning and tell us how it all began since we're here? Um, I was actually at a fair, a local fair, Altamont Fair, you know. and uh, we would go with our youngest son every year and go into the, the sheep barn, and I always loved seeing everybody, what they made, and there was a, a woman there, and this was almost 30 years ago, a woman there spinning. And I was fascinated by it. And it was a Saturday, and the fair ended Sunday. She said, you'd really like to learn. Come back tomorrow morning. Nobody's really here in the morning except the shepherds. And that started it all. Um, I met a couple of shepherds, and they said, oh, we've got spinning groups. Come on over. You can try the wheels. Mm -hmm. And it began from there. And I, I was just fascinated by the process of spinning. And it opened up a whole universe of, oh, yes. of just everything about spinning and the natural progression of how you can make something from nature and I don't know I just I really itself. really love it from the sheep itself and it's mm. really been a huge part of my life and connection of it was so wonderful to discover oh this is my jam I really do like this <laughs> this is this is great the whole process and it's really been wonderful and there's never something you can't learn from it yeah yeah it's fun Yep. And I met Barb through, at, through the same group of spinners and sort of a similar experience because I taken my kids out to a few festivals and was mesmerized by the demonstrating spinners. And uh, that's it for now. Let's hope this recorded properly because I never did a sound check. Ah. Okay. <laughs>